Hey, it's Tom from WPWithTom.com, and in this video, I'll be going over the basics of the Divi email opt-in module. So before we dive into the tutorial, I just wanted to say that if you don't already have Divi, I highly recommend that you pick it up for yourself. And if you want to use my special affiliate link discount, you can get at least 10% off Divi when you go to purchase it. And that is WPWithTom.com slash Divi. And I also wanted to mention that I'll be posting videos covering all of these Divi modules. So be sure to subscribe if you want to see more of those. And with this quick intro out of the way, let's dive into the basics of the Divi email opt-in module. So in this example, I'm going to cover how to do some basic design changes to our email opt-in. And I'm also going to show how to add it or link it to MailChimp's free email service. So if I scroll down here to the site, I'm going to just hit plus and regular section here. And I'll insert a full single row here. And then I'll scroll down to where it says email opt-in to get started by adding this module in. So right here, we're given this by default out of the box. You can change your title here and make edits to that within this section. You can also go and change your text over here. And it's very basic, easy changes that you can make within this section to make it your own. So in this section, you might want to say subscribe for the biggest deals or the latest deals or get notified of when there's sales, something like that as just a random example. And then you could have some more information here about what they'd actually be subscribing to. And then from here, I'm going to go over and show you how to actually change this so it's linked up to your email account. So if we go down here to email account, we can see that by default it says MailChimp, but there is a whole list of email providers. There's a lot of very popular ones in here. And I actually like quite a few of them more than MailChimp, but MailChimp is probably the most popular from this list. So I'm going to go with that one in this example. Here it says select the list. I'm just going to go and skip that and click add for now. So within here, we're going to have to put in an account name. So I'm just going to put in WP with Tom test, and then we're going to need our API key. So to get to that section over here, what you need to do is go down to your profile where it says account, and then you go to account. And then once you're in this section, you go to where it says Extras, API Keys. So that is how you navigate to get your API key to basically link these two together. Now here I'm going to just go and click Create a Key since it's the first time I'm making one. And then I'll go and grab this key out of here. I'll copy it and I'll go back over here to this and then I'll paste in the API key and hit Submit. So once you paste that in, it's going to go through the process of linking it to that account. And you can see that now it says WP with Tom list. If you had more lists than that, you would have additional ones showing here for the dropdown. So the reason that you might have different lists is if you have different opt-ins throughout your website. So maybe you have one for people that want sales. Maybe you have a newsletter. There could be different reasons why you'd have different lists here but you could select which list you want this corresponding email opt-in to go with. So I'm going to just leave it like that for now. But if you hit fetch list, you can look at the other options for your list that you can pull these signups into. So from here, I'm going to go down to where it says background and I'm going to make the background kind of fit with this part of the site. I'm not going to copy in the hex code exactly, but I'll make the form close to it with the orange and it will just go with the color scheme for this. So that's how you would change the background of this form. You can also make this just a two wide area and maybe have an image on the left and then the form on the right. That's an option if you don't want it to be this wide as well. And then some other things you can do is if you go over to the design tab, you can change things like this button. For example, if you went down to button, you can choose to use custom styles. And then you can adjust the font, for example, make it a little bit bigger. You can go and make the text black as an example. You can make the button background white. So there's a few things that you can do within here. You can have a button border width. I'm going to take the border away. So now there's no border around it. If you want to, you can also make the button border radius change and make it more pill shaped. The larger you go up with this number. So there's different options that you can do within here. You can also go down, increase the font weight if you want to make it maybe like bold. So it really stands out a little bit that they're going to be subscribing when they do this. And you can change the icon animation here. So right now we have this point right here. Maybe you want it to be like a check mark, for example. 
So you can do that and it says subscribe with a check mark. So there's different options that you can do within here. But I really just wanted to show you the basics of what you can do with this section in the email opt-in and how to link it to MailChimp. So that wraps up the basics of the DB email opt-in module. I hope you enjoyed this quick video and learned the basics from it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more WordPress and Divi related tutorials. Thanks for viewing and have a wonderful day.